This is Cyril, the sheep. He's our pet. As in Cyril, our pet sheep. <coughs> and this is Philip, my brother. As in my brother, the mad inventor. What's that, Philip? You all right, Philip? Science, the last frontier. <laughs> oh, isn't he gorgeous? To look at Cyril now, you'd think butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. But oh man, it wasn't always like that. <laughs> Cyril was on the slippery slide before Sarge stepped in and turned Cyril's life around. It all began on Sarge's first day at work. So we're turning right now into Street and Parade. This is the town centre, Central Business District, what have you. Righty oh. This is where the heat is, eh, Lisa? Where the bad guys hang? Pretty much. So tell me about Lisa. Interests, hobbies. What makes Lisa tick? Well, I enjoy cooking, netball. I like making my own clothes. Very good. And then, of course, there's my jet ski and my kickboxing. Oh, and I like to pull the motors out of trucks and rebuild the engines. Hello. What? Bad guy. I've thought about this heaps, about Sarge's behaviour. You do it on purpose, don't you? No, I don't. Do what on purpose? Being different. You do it on purpose. No, I don't. Yes, you do. The poetry and everything. You try to keep people confused. No, I don't. Why would I do that? Well, I don't know. I want you to tell me. Granted, I'm not your everyday policeman. Admit, to many I must seem a mass of contradictions, an enigma even. But you're wrong to suggest this is something I somehow cultivate. Yes, you do. What is wrong with a poem, for heaven's sake? A rhyme's a crime, is it, in your book? Come on, Sarge, it's not just the poetry. It's your whole attitude. There he goes, protecting the good citizens of Angeles, wearing one brown sock and one green one. Difference is dangerous. That's good. Thanks, Lockie. I'll keep that in mind if I want to win the affections of the younger set. Stay one of the herd. Well, Sarge, it's hard enough fitting into a new school without you know, standing out. If a traffic light didn't stand out, how would we know when it was time to move forward? When it was time to stop? I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all for making my first day such a memorable one. Now, homework. I'd like you all to read a poem of your own choosing. So he does do it on purpose. Well, I hope he does. Because if he isn't doing it on purpose, it's too scary to think about. So we get home after my first day at school and Sarge's first day at work. Here they are. <sighs> How was it, guys? Exciting? Oh, big day for me. What about you, Philip? Big day? Totally large, Sarge. Hey! Keep it down there, Cyril! Keep it down! Quiet! How's Blonde? Yeah, she's just eating some lino. Hey! Keep it down in there! I'm warning you! Philip, give me a hand. You brought a prisoner home? Yeah, you just, um, just keep your wits about you. Hey, I'm warning you! I is he going to be dangerous? 
Well, this fellow's got all sorts of tricks up his sleeve. I thought he might keep the grass down a bit. Of course he did, yes. Lucky, go and guard the entrance. Philip, you ready? likes it already. A sheep? Well, technically he's a ram. Ram's the word for him, all right. I had to arrest him today. But then I thought, hang on, we've got the space, we need to keep the grass down, the kids will love him. You brought home a sheep? Just until somebody claims him. I've named him Cyril. Okay, so Sarge has crazy ideas. We're used to that. But this time with Cyril, He'd taken things to a whole new level. And that night, even Mum had a few questions. Anybody else would have bought a lawnmower. Yeah, but that's the beauty of the thing. Cyril didn't cost us a cent. But in a way, if you'd said, Joy, what's it to be? A washing machine that works. Or a sheep. I probably would have got behind the washing machine. I've got a feeling about this sheep. I think Cyril is here for a purpose. Now, what that purpose is, I don't know. If you ask me, I doubt I could tell you. But I wouldn't be surprised if somewhere down the track, it turns out old Cyril has a trick or two up his fleece. You do. You amaze me. Yep, nothing strange about this family. Just a pet sheep named Cyril, a baby sister who couldn't get enough lino, and a weird brother who would try to stay awake all night so he wouldn't wet the bed. No problems here. Lockie. Uh-huh. I don't think Mum wants a sheep. No. To tell the truth, I'm not all that keen myself. I'm going to sleep, Philip. I doubt I'll get any sleep tonight. It was pretty traumatic out there with Cyril. I mean, the physical scars may have healed, but the emotional scars are going to take quite a bit longer. I was learning something about the city and the country. In the city, you do a weird act and you're one among thousands. Do the same thing in the country, you're a marked man. Sheep dip, sheep dip, sheep dip, sheep dip, and Angeles was a small town where a secret has a short life. Sheep dip, sheep dip, sheep dip. Cyril! At home, Cyril wasn't doing himself any favours. Cyril! <laughs> Cyril! Cyril! <laughs> Meanwhile, Philip seemed to present Cyril with a different kind of challenge altogether. Philip went, the ram was sure to go. This included school. Coming to get you. 
when Karma was restored after the Angelus Primary School riot, Mum begged me to go and bring Cyril home. Come on. Hi. Lucky Leonard. Vicky! Yeah, hi there. What are you doing? Oh, uh, you know, um, I was I was just walking a sheep. Sheep? What 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 sheep? Oh, oh, you mean my sheep. Yeah, right. I heard you got a sheep. Yeah, well, here he is. What did you just say? Cool. Where does it live? Um, well, there's a little bit of lawn at the back of the... with the roof on top. What was that? What did he say? Sorry, little brother. Evil. So, where do you live? Down there. In the swamp. Yeah. I live up on the hill. Well, this is halfway then. Between up there and, you know, down there. I better let you get going. Fair enough. See ya. I'd like that. What's it like kissing someone with braces? Zip it, Philip. That girl's got more eyes in the back of the telly. Zip it, Philip. Be like sticking your tongue in a bird cage. Blech. Philip, watch me carefully. Coming to get you. Mum said it was time for her and Sarge to have a frank exchange of views. If Cyril is becoming destructive, it is because he is getting bored. Bored? Well, excuse me for not being diverting enough to amuse a sheep. <laughs> Truly, how many times have we seen it? Bored teenagers roaming the streets with nothing to do but get into trouble? Too many times. Oh, goodness me. Well, this explains everything. No wonder people think the Leonards are strange. <laughs> the mother can't even keep a sheep entertained. Joy, I think you're approaching this from the wrong direction. You're seeing burden. You're not seeing fun. <laughs> fun. In the history of the entire world, whenever pets are brought home, who is it that ends up caring for and feeding them? Is it the father? No, I don't think it is. Is it the children? Yeah, but it attacks the children. No. Mothers do. Mothers end up caring for and feeding pets. So true, isn't it? When you think about it. Shh. And have you wondered why I'm wearing these clothes? Hmm? It's because everything else I own is at the bottom of a swamp we call a yard in this Joy, place. OK, I agree with you. I do. I mean, we're still settling in. And with that in mind, I've invited the guys over from the station for a barbecue. A barbecue? When? Oh, that'll be then. Oh, you do this to me on purpose, don't you? Yeah, bring that. Good to see you. Snowy. Hi, right, Sarge. How are you? Yeah, good. This is the boys. Philip. Lockie. Phil. And this is my wife, Joy. Hi, Joy. That's Zoe and Wingnut. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. Lisa not coming? No, no Lisa's coming. Ah, uh, yeah, very good, very good. I'm Lisa. Have Snowy and Wingnut turned up yet? Uh, no. They're here. Um, my dad is just taking them into the... Uh, the... With a roof on top. Sorry? Uh, would you like to see my room? Yeah. Gee, is this yours? It's great. Uh, it's just something I threw together the other day. I love science. Final frontier. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to sit down for a second. So you're going to be a scientist when you leave school? I thought perhaps an inventor. I invent things. Tell me, Lisa, what do you do? I'm in the police. Oh, of course you are, yes. I knew that. So what have you invented? Uh, I specialise in explosive devices. Really? 
counter terrorism measures can't say too much, really. No. It's all pretty hush-hush. I would have liked to have been an inventor. I've always loved playing around with mechanical things. Really? Yeah, so as far as I can tell, Cyril was on his way to the abattoir and escaped at the last minute. Hi. All right. Philip's just showing me his laboratory. <laughs> Good night. So anyone who comes as close to the chop as that, anyone, man or beast, I'd say he's entitled to as much life as he can handle. What do you say, Wingnut? Well done for me, thanks, Sarge. Philip! OK, looking good. Not a problem. Philip, what have you done? <coughs> <coughs> that was pretty intense. I'm afraid the BT-7 is still at the concept stage. Oh, and I remember this cute little guy. Gorgeous, isn't he? Yes. He's almost part of the family. Nice seal, good sheep, not too big to be a lamb roast, you know. Come on, boy. Taken to you, Philip. One, two, three cans of Coke, I think. Limeade, or two. Was it two? I think it was two. Four cans of Coke, and that was before I even looked at the Fanta. How can I think of the future at least all the time I wet the bed? Phil. She's 25 and you're 10. It's not going to happen. 23. You asked her? Size 7 shoes, 34 inch bust. Is that good? I don't know. I wanted to know everything about her. Do you think I'm being too pushy? Go to sleep, Philip. What's the point when the morning will only bring more to spare and humiliation? Philip. Let's face it. I've consumed nearly five litres of soft drink in the past three and a half hours. Come the morning, I'm going to have to paddle my way out of bed in the canoe. Ah, ah, ah. <sighs> yes! 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 scientific about this. Why was this morning different? What was it about yesterday or last night? Aha. Uh. Uh -huh. Here it is, lanolin. A fatty substance extracted from wool. What does it say about bedwet? Nothing. What do you reckon, Sarge? Do you think it could be something to do with the lanolin? Actually, Sarge had another theory. Well, simply to suggest that when Philip confronted his abject fear of Cyril and overcame it, perhaps at the same time, he overcame his fear of wetting the bed. 
But if Philip wants to think it's the lanolin, all well and good. Can we keep him, Mom, please? As long as I rub my hands in Cyril's face, I think I can beat this thing. Mom! I told you old Cyril might have a trick or two up his place. Of course we can. Yay! <laughs> And you don't mind if everyone else in Angelus thinks we're aliens? So the Leonards have a sheep. You know what? I feel pretty good about having a sheep. Like the apes on the Rock of Gibraltar. Like the ravens at the Tower of London. As long as Cyril is in our backyard. Oh, there will be Leonards living in Angelus. That's the other scary thing about Sarge. Somehow he gets it right. Somehow, Sarge knew that the one thing our family needed to feel good about itself was a sheep. Sarge, I hope I'm not out of line here. I've actually composed a poem of my own. Oh, that's... That's tremendous, Snowy. I'm, I'm tremendously impressed. Please. <clears throat> Sitting in the laundromat, I chance to look around me, to wonder and to stare at the people gathered about me, a sight beyond compare. It seemed that we were one humanity engaged in common strife to wash the dirt out from our socks and lead a cleaner life. And some of us might make it, and some of us might crash. But all of us were trying at $5.10 a wash. Snowy. This is what good policing is all about. OK, here we go. Nobody move. You can be different, or you can make a difference. And some people can do both. Like Sarge.